Hello, my name is Nancy Ierson. I'm the Gund Family Chief Curator at the Barnes Foundation. And you're joining me for Barnes Takeout, your daily serving of art. Today, we're in Gallery 5 of the Barnes Foundation, and we're going to look at a wonderful seascape by the French artist Georges Seurat, who was born in Paris in 1859. And I think it's just such a wonderful outdoors painting. Uh, we're looking at it right in the center of the, of the main part of the wall there. And really its luminosity just hits us as we walk into the room. You can see that Barnes put it on this wall because each of the canvases has that stretch of blue at the top of the horizon line. So we get a nice balance of color. But for me personally, the Sura is the, is the absolute knockout painting. It's just so light and bright. And it really makes me think of being by the sea, which I'm sure, if you're like me, is something that is just so wonderful and enjoyable. So let's look closely at the painting. It was made by Surah in the summer of 1886. He had the habit of going to the northern coast of France every summer. He'd done that as a child with his family. And at this time in his 20s, it was a habit that he kept up. He tended to go to a slightly different part of the coast each year. And this part is called Enfleur. It's a port town. You can still visit it now. And in the 1800s, it had been a very bustling port. By the time Sura is there in 1886, it's slightly quieter than it had been. But there's still plenty going on. Uh, lots of tourists would go there and it's a place where you could just enjoy the outdoors. We know that Sura rented rooms with a customs officer there. So really, um, you know, it was geared up for this kind of trip. And Sura went with the ambition of making a few paintings. Now, unfortunately, we know that the weather was a bit variable. He ends up leaving town um, probably mid-August. Uh, he jokes to a friend that he might leave on, on Friday the 13th and, and that would potentially be a bad thing. <laughs> um, the weather had been a bit variable, so he really hadn't achieved everything that he'd wanted to do. But again, from his letters, we know that he created about six paintings, um, at least a couple of drawings, one of which was a study for this work. And I think it's a great achievement. I mean, I if I produce anything like this in a couple of months, I'd be more than happy. <laughs> Now, how do we know it is en fleur? One of the, the very distinctive features in the en fleur landscape is its lighthouse. And there we have, just in the corner, this wonderful structure with its white body, with its sort of pinkish light at the top. And in a canvas where there aren't a lot of people, it almost takes on the presence of a figure. It's also a wonderful excuse for Sura to describe reflections. You can see how from its place on the harbour side, Sura creates a vertical line. And in the water, that white is picked up once again, just little dashes of white amongst the blue and the golden, giving you a sense of the shimmering surface of the water. And just again, to return to this sort of emptiness, I wonder perhaps if we have a little figure on one of the sailboats in the foreground, perhaps this little touch of red might indicate a person. But by and large, we're left to enjoy the scene and to enjoy the colors and to enjoy the way of painting. You can just see here, again, how Sora really enjoys placing colors one beside the other uh, he enjoys the contrast of colours. We have reds against purples, we have greens against golds. Colour contrast was something that really fascinated Sura. Um, and that was very important because it set him apart from painters of a different generation. So I'm just going to focus out again at the overall scene. Now, Sora, being in his 20s at this point, was younger than the Impressionist artists who had made their name in Paris just slightly beforehand. And with this new way of working, with this wonderful broken brushstroke, Sora was effectively pitting himself against those older artists. Uh, he was 
essentially defining himself as part of a new generation. And when he writes about this way of painting, he calls it my method, and he underlines that expression. He's very keen to show that he is doing something very different, that it is based in science. Color theory was very important to Seurat, and it was something that was taught at the art schools in the 1880s. Uh, and really, Seurat embraces that. For him, this is not so much a painting about feelings or sensations. It's about the way in which your eye blends color. And I think this is particularly evident in these little outhouses here where you see the greens and the reds and the blues all just playing off against one another. And I think that the site of Enfleur then becomes more important because it had been a place that the Impressionist artists had visited. We have views of Enfleur by Monet and his peers. And so Seurat, by taking on this heritage, really shows us that contrast very starkly. Um, this is somewhere new and different um, in, in his eyes. The location might be the same, but we're seeing it afresh. However, <laughs> and this is probably where I would have annoyed Seurat if he was here to hear me, for me, this painting defies its own scientific qualities. Um, it does create a wonderful sense of atmosphere. We really feel as if we're by the harbour. And I'm not alone in thinking this. Um, this was something that viewers in Seurat's day also acknowledged. And I want to read you an excerpt from a review of Seurat's Pictures of Enfleur that was made in 1887. And here we are. The seascapes that Seurat exhibits this year, his views of Enfleur, especially his lighthouse, rest again on this particular feeling that he expresses of a nature more lulling than melancholy, a nature that reposes indifferently under skies without passion, sheltered from the winds. Those who wish to are free to prefer less cold and more vivid impressions, or to love beaches more bustling and noisy. For me, these works have a particular charm that I cannot deny. I find in them a fullness of expansive air, a siesta of a quiet soul, a distinction of wan indolence, a caressing lullaby of the sea that soothes and dissipates my weary cares. And I just love that last line, that soothes and dissipates my weary cares. And I really hope that in looking at this wonderful seascape that you find some of that relaxation that a critic found in looking at Seurat's work in 1887. This shimmering magical picture is one that I hope you'll revisit when you come to the Barnes Foundation next. And in the meantime, please do tune in for more Barnes Takeout tomorrow and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much and see you again soon. Bye bye. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.